MTV always gives you the biggest stars and they don't get much bigger than the Queen of Pop. Madonna Unwrapped brings you the story behind the sweet success of her new album, Hard Candy. I'm about to reveal all on MTV, so stay right there. April 2008, New York City. Madonna fans were in for a tasty treat when their idol chose to play an exclusive free concert at the Roseland Ballroom to celebrate the release of her 11th studio album. My music career really started off here in New York, so it always means a lot to me to come here. I've done lots of gigs throughout my entire career at Roseland, so it has a historical kind of importance to me, and I like, I love small, small clubs. I like performing, I love theater, I love the idea of, you know, a, a memorable performance that people aren't gonna, you know, forget. Yeah. Inspiring. She is totally amazing. Inspirational. Madonna is an innovator. Icon. Trendsetter. Icon. Icon. Madonna is Madonna. When Madonna stepped out of a New York taxi as a young 20-year-old, nothing was ever to be the same again. What made you come to New York? Fame and fortune. <laughs> With her love of innovation in her music and her style, it's no coincidence that Madonna has been one of the major presences on MTV since the early days of the channel. First MTV Awards, remember that? From that moment on, it was obvious that Madonna was to become one of the biggest female icons of the 20th century. The winner is the envelope, Madonna! She's inspired music fans around the world. She's, of course, Madonna. 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 The biggest female star on the planet. Thanks a lot, you guys. I guess this means you like me. You really like me. There's no doubt about that. From Miami to Milan, audiences in their millions have enjoyed Madonna's legendary live performances. Her elaborate shows have pleased crowds throughout the world like no other. Back in New York City, where it all began, Madonna used her latest gig at Roseland to preview tracks off the new album, tastily titled Hard Candy. Originally, I wanted to call this uh, the album Candy Shop, but um, everyone said, you know, you can't because a 50 Cent song. <laughs> So then I wanted to call the album Give It To Me, but then they said, no, you can't because there's a Timberland track called that. And I was like, ugh. OK, let me think of something else. So I don't know. I just came up with Hard Candy. So the queen of pop picked to mix some of the best beat makers in the business and chose the sweet sounds of Pharrell Williams and the Timberland Timberlake Dream Team for her new record. I knew it was like time to make another record and, and um, I just pretty much thought, well, you know, who's making music right now that I really dig? And at the time I was listening to a lot of uh, Timberland tracks and I loved it. Justin's record it had just come out. And I was a huge fan of that. And and I love Pharrell. I've always loved Pharrell. And I just said, okay, well, why don't I just work with the best of the best in urban music? And that's how it came to be. Welcome to the good life. 
But we like the girls who ain't on TV because they get more out than the models. The when you're pop royalty, only the finest selection of collaborators will do. And they don't come more grandiose than King Kanye. Hey. Well, he just happened to be recording uh, in the hallway across from where we were working at the record plant in Los Angeles. And my manager said, well, wouldn't it be great if he would come and do something on one of the tracks? And I said, yeah, it'd be awesome if he, if he would agree to it. So we asked and he said yes. With superpowers like Kanye and Pharrell working on the record, how did Madonna avoid a clash of the titans? Well, I think everybody that I worked with has a very strong personality. They're all successful in their own right. They, nobody needed to be there. Everybody was there because they wanted to be there. Um, and, and we all have very strong ideas of what we like and what we don't like. So the art of negotiating and compromise comes in. Ultimately, it was, it was not, I didn't want it to be like, I'm going to show up and you guys are going to do everything for me and I'm just going to sing on the record. I saw it as a true collaboration and then I would bring what I had to bring to the table, which is my lyrics, the way I write, my sense of melody, and they would bring what they bring to the table. when you hear the record you, you don't go yeah that's an obvious I mean uh, Pharrell song for instance and I don't I, I think that there are some songs on the record that do sound more like something Pharrell would do but then there are other songs that are di quite different From blonde ambition to disco diva, Madonna has always been the master of reinvention. And her provocative album cover for Hard Candy was no exception. I like to like create characters when I'm when I'm doing something like up an album art uh, photo shoot. And I work with Stephen Klein a lot, the photographer, and we always create a character in an environment. And our reference this time was a boxer, so I was like a female boxer, like, and and that's. Oh, that was riffing off the song Give It To Me, which is basically, you know, I'm not, you know, come on, give me all you got kind of thing. So it's quite a sort of tough stance. Madonna is the only woman in history who has dominated music on earth for almost three decades. Her musical reign continues with the release of her 11th studio album, Hard Candy. The first single sees Madonna and Justin Timberlake joined in one mighty musical confection. Timberlake. Justin Madonna. Four minutes to save the world. I'm out of time and all I got is four minutes. Four minutes. Eight. I'm here on the set of my video with Justin, but as you can see, Justin's not with me because he's eating as usual. Here to shoot the video. Still haven't met Madonna. It's kind of weird. She's sort of a methodical. That's it. She's just sort of a methodical. Down. Something tells me Justin's behind me. Yeah. It was fantastic working with him. He's he's a he's a great songwriter. Um, he likes playing with rhythms, and I like words. So we 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 wrote well together. We sort of go off in a corner and listen to stuff and come up with concepts and have shrink sessions and talk about what we want the song to be about and we'd get off the subject and we'd get back on the subject and we'd, you know, it was, it was a very, it was a, it was like a think tank and uh, he's really creative. I enjoyed working with him. I've been taking off layers of clothes through the whole video. I just like this. Okay. Visual. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's his turn. When what clues? Can we take him here? Yeah. 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 Well, hold on. Which one? Don't folks out there just want to see me undress, Justin? I'll be the first one that had a hard time undressing. Oh. Why do I have to go and say that? Because it's true. 
So was it all tantrums and tiaras when Her Majesty shared the spotlight with Pops Prince Charming? Right. Donald's play with me, not you. Please. <laughs> he's fun, he's confident. He he's um doesn't take himself too seriously and he just easy going, yeah. Just wanna be a bro. Down. Right. It will it's not give you up. We're very different. He's an Aquarius. I'm a Leo. It won't Speak let you down. I, mean, I write things down. He doesn't. Oh! He likes to be all spontaneous. I told you we was over preparing. He's motivational therapist. Here we go. She's in. It's called live life. It's just natural. Kid, they're talking about makeup. We're talking about old school <laughs> cartoons. Madonna enlisted directing team Jonas and Francois, the duo behind the innovative animated videos of Kanye West and French electro band Justice. They were so cutting edge, even Madonna didn't know what the treatment was about. We don't really know what we're doing. We all read the treatment and none of us could understand it. It wasn't really written the in The directors speak French. And we speak English, but not... Anything else. <laughs> On voit Madonna arriver en poussant une voiture, qui elle-même rentre dans un living room, qui ensuite euh, passe dans, un, dans une salle de bain. On arrive dans une chambre. It's very conceptual, you know. Like this, we basically gave the song to the two French directors, and they said they came up with the con they they came up with the only concept that I thought was interesting was that this this black sort of amorphous graphic line is slowly eating up the world and I just like that as a concept. C'est un peu comme si on avait fabriqué un petit décor avec des petites souris et que Justin et Madonna sont pas des petites souris mais c'est ça fait penser à ça comme si No, you know their antennas are tuned in. Yeah, exactly. Elle découvrait le décor et ce qui est échappé et que nous, spectateurs, on était dedans et on les suivait. On regardait comment ils, ils, ils essayaient de s'en sortir, en fait. Je ne comprends pas ce qu'ils ont dit, mais je sais que c'était sérieux. Et on va avoir l'impression qu'ils sont toujours en mouvement, toujours en train de courir. Ils ne peuvent pas s'échapper, en fait. Donc ils ne peuvent pas aller à droite ni à gauche parce que ça part aussi au vide. As we're going through normal everyday life, a black graphic line chews us up. But damn it, we're gonna have a good time before we get there. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Hundred and forty seconds. That's not a lot of time for Madge and JT to save the world. I don't think it's important to take it too literally. I think the song, more than anything, is about having a sense of urgency about how we are, you know, we are living on borrowed time essentially, and you know, pe people are becoming much more aware of the environment and how we're destroying the planet, and we can't just keep distracting ourselves. We do have to like educate ourselves and wake up and do something about it. You know, at the same time, we don't want to be boring and serious and not have fun. So it's kind of like, well, if we're going to save the planet, can we have a good time while we're doing it? Yeah. Tick -tock, tick -tock. This is for smelly butts. <laughs> it's so over perfumed. It's not. That's funny because my right ass cheek is killing me. <sighs> is there anybody here massaging our ass cheeks? Where's the part where the masseuse shows up and rubs my inner thigh? Yeah, if we put no. our bo both of our asses together, we would have one decent <laughs> ass. See what I do for my art? Okay, where do you see the rash behind my leg? Okay, on my knee. It's called sweat. Look, look at that. Tears. You see that? Think that looks like fun? 
at this point. I, wait a minute. I think I have a decent ass. Of course oh you think you have a decent ass. <laughs> well, you know what? Every woman needs a good ass in her life. <laughs> <laughs> No one can accuse Madonna of not working her butt off, whether it's in the gym, in the studio, or on the film set of her directorial debut. It's called Filth and Wisdom. It stars uh, Eugene Hutz, who was in a uh, gypsy punk band called Gogo -Go Bordello. When I die, I'm going to go straight to heaven. I wrote the part for him, because I'd seen him in a film, and I'd heard his band, and he basically plays a broke musician in a band in, in, in the movie. I'm this far away from transcontinental superstardom. And I'm this far away from telling the rest of your band what you do to make money. It's about life's paradoxes. It's like, it's the title really, it's kind of like hard candy, filth and wisdom. It's wisdom in the darkest places. You know, no matter how righteous you are, there's always going to be a part of you that wants to be decadent and naughty. So it's about that in the interplay of those two words or those two aspects of humanity. Take Juliet. She's a nice girl. I want to help people. She's also got a swamp. Did you take her medication? Yeah. Did you? What the bloody is this? This is a respectable establishment. You can't show up here with pills in your pocket and a bloody black eye frightening off the customers. I will not walk for a bigot. Juggling raising three children, making a new album, directing a film and generally being an international phenomenon, Madonna has now added the plight of some one million orphans in Malawi onto her to-do list. People always ask me why I chose Malawi, and I tell them, I didn't. It chose me. Just hearing, hearing about their story really moved me. I produced a documentary called I Am Because We Are, which just premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. I've been working on it for over two years, and it primarily focuses on children who've been orphaned by AIDS in Malawi and Sub-Saharan Africa in general and follows some of the stories of these children and their families, very intimate um, journeys, sometimes quite painful and, and, and emotional. How do we break this cycle? How do we prevent this next generation of children from repeating history and accepting that they cannot change their destiny? Basically, lets the audience, brings the audience into their world and then gives people chances and uh, opportunities of, uh, you know, ways for them to, to help get involved and, and be part of the solution. With over 200 million albums sold, 61 top 10 singles and the highest grossing tour by a female artist, Madonna has been recognised as the world's most successful female recording artist of all time. I'm not really interested in numbers and lists. I'm interested in being creative. Being in a book of world records isn't really relevant to me, but I'm happy that I've had all the success that I've had, and I'm glad that I still feel inspired. Yeah. A multi-award winning singer, songwriter, producer, cultural icon, author, actress, and filmmaker. What is left for Madonna? Well, I'll make more music. I'll go on tour. I would love to direct another film. How's that for a start? <laughs>